<clears throat> well, hello everyone. Uh, it's almost four o'clock, so I think we'll uh, make a start. Uh, so welcome uh, to this webinar on the Keep Talking book, and we're looking at some of the AAC game resources. Uh, Joanna is going to demonstrate some of the Keep, Talk Keep Talking activities using a variety of communication software and simple technology as well. Uh, this year actually is the 10th anniversary of the Keep Talking book and we are pleased that people are continuing to find the activities and communication ideas useful. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll just pop the URL into the chat pane so you can see it. There we go. Um, so it was actually one of our top downloads over the past year. Um, so as usual, Joanna will present for 20 minutes. And if you have any questions um, for, for Joanna, just, you can keep them to the end of the session and then pop them into the chat pane, which is just down on the right hand side. It's the purple chevron on the right hand side. So any questions, pop them into the chat pane and we can ask Joanna them once she's finished the session. OK, Joanna, so that's uh, four o'clock. Uh, over, over to you. OK, thanks. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, nice to see so many of you here live. So that's really good. Um, right, I'm going to get on and say a little bit about some of the activities from the Keep Talking book. Um, as Craig mentioned there, this is the, the 10th anniversary of, of the book. It's hard to believe it's been that long. Um, but uh, yeah, I was expecting my, my eldest daughter um, when this book was written and she's helped me doing some of the programming for, for some of the activities today. So that's quite a nice um, little memory of, of, of where I was at that point in time. But the book was, the book was written by myself and uh, Sally Miller based on communication activities and communication games that we'd used in lots of various communication groups over the years. Um, so um, I'm going to take you through some of those activities and, and games and show you them on a variety of software. Okay, so we're going to start. The, the first thing I should tell you is that the, oh, sorry, hang on a second. Joanna will be back very soon. Oh, sorry. That's, That's okay, Joanna, no problem. Interruption there. Right, okay, so we're going to go on and I'm going to show you the easiest way to get the activities is to download them from the, from the, from the website. So as Craig said, he's put the URL into the, the chat pane and the easiest way is to go to the download section um, and from there you've got the Keep Talking book and this is where the activities are actually individual activities that you can download as PDFs. So this is quite handy because then you can on your on your mobile device to refer to as well or to other people individually, other professionals, print them out, etc. So that's really handy. And of course, they're all free to download from here. So we've got five different sections, we've got the five minute standbys, the out and about, work and play, playing with pals and communication friends groups. So these are all the different sections and the different styles of activities. They're kind of self-explanatory in the way that um, the five minute standbys are quick activities to do when you've got a kind of bit of extra time in the day when you think I could be using um, this time to, to practice communication with my AC user. So we've got those ones, they're nice quick ones. Out and about are a bit more um, for if a, a pupil is out and about in the school, um, ways of practicing using their communication aid with other members of staff and other pupils around the school, getting them to do jobs, that kind of thing. Then we've got work and play. So that's more sort of curricular based. You can do interviews, you can do um, various types of surveys um, around the school um, or in the, in the nursery. Uh, playing with pals, that's a bit more interactive with other, with other children. So, for example, playing shops, um, yes, no game, 
and um, finding out about your your friend etc and then the communication friends group activities um, are a bit more suited to doing in a larger group so with several communication aid users but for each act, um, section there is a communication choice board so for example for a communication friends group if I open up that one you'll see it's a PDF and it's just a, a very simple choice board where the, the pupils can choose which activity they would like to do in that communication group. And there's one, one of those for each of the sections. So as I said, you can download them individually or you can go and actually that's free or you can buy the book. If you go to services um, and you go to our shop, you can actually buy a hard copy of the book in there as well. There it is there, communication under communication, keep talking, and you can buy a, a copy and that will be spied and, and sent out to you as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've picked out a few activities and I'm going to just show some examples of how you might use them on a selection of communication software. So we're going to go to, I've downloaded my PDFs and I've put them into iBooks. Um, so that's a nice way of kind of keeping them all together. So I've got all my keep talking PDFs together. So I'm going to start with make me a sandwich. So this is a nice simple activity. Each activity is set out the same way. You have your communication aims, then you have your how to play, different scenarios that you could, so variety of, sort of variations on a theme of how you could use the activity. Then you've got what you need and a little notepad. The kind of vocabulary you might want to have programmed and then some hints and tips at the end um, of other ways you can use it things that we found have helped when we're doing the activities live um, and some extensions of how you could as i say variations on a theme you could do more activities in the, in the same kind of style so if i was going to do this activity this make me a sandwich let's say for example i have an aac user who's using snap core so i've got my communication board up here i've got my core vocabulary and i've also got fringe vocabulary in the topic pages so i could say something like i'm going to design my sandwich and it's going to be a really yucky sandwich that's one of the options for a witch so a really yucky sandwich for a witch what would i put into that sandwich Mm. I want go to my word lists, go to food and drink. Hmm, what will I have in this sandwich? Carrots. Carrots. Biscuit. Carrots, biscuit, cake. cake. Mm. Egg. Sandwich. So that's what I would like in my yucky sandwich. I want carrots, biscuit, cake, egg sandwich. Ooh, that sounds disgusting. Ugh, yuck. So you could come up with your yucky sandwich. Or you could come up with your something like you're in a competition. That's another one of the options. A master sandwich. So the nicest sandwich that you could think of. So in that case, you could say... I want... Hmm... I've got something nice this time. Chicken. Chicken and... Hmm. Lettuce. Sandwich. I want chicken lettuce sandwich. So a chicken lettuce sandwich, that might be a bit more tasty. That might be a sandwich you might want to put in a picnic. So you can use the extensive vocabulary you have if you have an AAC user who's got you know, a communication app who's got a bit more um, vocabulary and language available for them. And you can, it really helps you to practice going through the categories, finding things you put in the sandwich, using the core vocabulary and the fringe vocabulary to make up the sentences. So there you go. So that's um, an example for make me a sandwich. Right, next we're going to have a look I went to the shops and I bought. So this is another one that <clears throat> always used to be popular when I was working in a special school. 
um, I went to the shops and I bought. So the, the idea behind this game, I'm sure a lot of you will know it. You say, I went to the shops and I bought, and then you come up with something that you bought at the shop. And then the next player has got to say, I went to the shops and I bought, and they have to say that item and add something to the list. And it's, so it goes on until somebody forgets. So it's really good for, obviously, for, for memory, short-term memory as well, remembering what's on the list. Um, and it's a really good game for turn-taking as well and listening, because you have to listen to the person that's spoken before you, remember what they said, and add it to the list. So I went to the shops and I bought. So you can have things that were all to do with one shop. Say, right, we're going to imagine we're going to the chemist. So you've got to pick lots of things you get at the chemist, or we're going to go to the food, sh food shop, a grocer's. So we'd have to pick everything that's, um, that's items of food. So again, you're practicing your topic vocabulary. So that's a really nice way of doing that. Um, you could also have variations on a theme. As it says on the second page, you could imagine you are coming up with ideas of what you would take on holiday. So it could be, I went on holiday and took, and you could be deciding what would you pack into your suitcase. So there's other variations on what you might want to do for that game as well. So as an example, let's just say I'm using Proloquo to go now. So I've got Proloquo to go. And of course, I could be making up the whole sentence in advance. So I could be using my core vocabulary to make up the whole sentence. Um, I'm going to do it in a Blue Peter style, for those of you who will remember that program. And have here's one I've made earlier. So I'm going to go in for, for um, speed here and go into recents. And earlier on, I constructed, I went to the shops and I bought. So I'm going to pop that in. I went to the shops and I bought. And then, of course, you've got the options to be going through your uh, communication aid and finding items of vocabulary in there. So I'm going to go to things because I know that that's where there's lots of topic vocabulary. And I'm going to say, right, it's all things to um, go in my house. So I'm going to go for furniture. I went to the shops and I bought and I might say bed. bed. And then the next person might say, I went to the shops and I bought a bed and something else. So another Proloco to go user, for example, or someone using Snapcore could be anybody with a with an extensive vocabulary on their communication aid and they could be adding it to the list. Lamp. Table. Etc. And you add, you're adding and adding and adding to the list there. So again, a good way to practice um, locating what's in your fringe vocabulary. Now, what about if you have somebody who doesn't have access to such extensive vocabulary? What are you going to do there? Well, another way we can do it is we can create a board with the vocabulary set vocabulary on it. And it's something that you could be using as an individual or in a pair, or you could have a board that a few pupils in the, in the class or the, the nursery would have access to. So you could use maybe an app like Sounding Board. So Sounding Board is a free communication app. And then I've got, I went to the shops and I've made a, a simple communication board here. And this time, that's the vocabulary, it's the set vocabulary. You could be doing that, one person could have that and another friend could be joining in. You could take turns or they could both have the same board on their iPad. You could share it by airdrop and they could both have the same board. So in this case, I have, um, it's been pre-recorded. So this is how it might work. I went to the shops and I bought lipstick. Your turn. And then somebody else would have a go and they've got to say. I went to the shops and I bought lipstick. And shampoo. There you go, and then the next one is back to the other person, so they've got to remember. I went to the shops and I bought lipstick, shampoo, and toothpaste, etc. Your turn, or they might say, I've forgotten. They might have forgotten what it is, and they might need a bit of a help, and the other person could help them. Uh, or they might remember that they might manage to do the whole list. Well done. So there you go. That's just a, a very simple one. And that would be 
uh, just a set page of vocabulary, so there's not so much navigation involved in that one. And again, you could share that sounding board with, with other members of the, of the group or with a friend for someone to play with. OK, so that is I went to the shops. Now, we're now going to have a look at um, one from the Communication Friends group, and it's called Show and Tell Photos. Now, this is always a, a popular one um, in groups that I've worked in in the past, because the idea of this one is that you are sharing a, a photo that means something to you, something it could be anything of your family, of a holiday, pets, of a nice day out. <clears throat> so the idea here is that you're showing your photo you're telling people a bit about it, and then they can ask you questions. So this is a really nice one to do in a, in a, in a group, especially with people getting to know each other. And um, so you might need the vocabulary, some where questions, you know, where was it taken, who is in it, when it was taken, etc. Um, and also the answers to these questions too. So I'm going to show you an example I've made in Grid. So this is Grid for iPad, but it would work equally well on Grid 3 on a PC. Um, where you could use any access method, switch access, eye gaze, etc. as well. It's just a template that could be shared from Grid for iPad or Grid and the, the PC software. My photo album. So I'm turning the page. Taking a wee second to come up. My pet cat, Luna. OK, so I've got a photo there. If I touch the photo, I've got a recording saying a little bit about what it is. This is my cat, Luna. She's two years old. I called her Luna because she's white and grey like the moon. OK, so that's a bit about Luna. And then the child could talk about the cat. My pet cat, Luna. She is sitting in my house. She is white and grey like the moon. So you've got a few messages just to comment on the on the photo so you can tell people a bit about it. And then the listen again, it reads out again what the, the message is behind the button. This is my cat Luna. She's two years old. I called her Luna because she's white and grey like the moon. And then you could have a whole photo album so you can go through. Got other um, pictures in here. I saw the golden monkey. So this is a photo at the botanics where they went to, the, to see a golden monkey on the building and you can see a bit about the story, a bit about the, the photo, a little story about it. Um, again, you can listen again. Go through your photos is another example. Sledging. Of sledging, so saying a little bit about the sledging. We had yummy ice cream. Another one about going and seeing Mario. And then you can have a link at the end, you've talked about your picture photo to talk about, and you can go and you can say to somebody, Your turn now. Your turn now to talk about the photo to talk about the photo. Or they might you might say to them, Do you have any questions to ask me? And they might say, or any comments, they might say, Your your turn now, you look funny. You look funny. Um, thank you very much. Or they might say You you look lovely. Or that's a good one. That's a good one. So you can comment on it and then it would be someone else's turn to share their photos. So there's uh, show an, ex an example, an idea for how you might use show and tell photos. OK, right. We're going to go on and have a wee look at trick or treat. So I like this activity because it's about telling jokes and children love telling jokes and it's a really good way to practice interaction skills, turn taking skills. So the trick or treat game. So this is basically having some jokes on your talker. So this could be done on a communication aid, it could be done on a step by step, a simple communication aid with, with sequenced recordings. Um, it can be done on a communication app. It could be also done on sounding board as well, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So basically, the idea of this game is you have, tell some jokes with your comic timing, and then the other people in your group um, or your friends, whoever you're doing it with, they decide if it's a good joke that um, you would get a, tr a, a, tri a treat, and it's a bad joke, you get a trick. So you have to vote. And if you get more votes for, for yes, it's a good joke, then you get a treat. And if you get more votes for it's a bad 
joke, then you have to do a trick. So something like, you know, um, lift lift your uh, lift your arms up ten times, or spin around for for ten seconds, or something like that. So a for, forfeit of some kind. So here's an example that I've made in, in sounding board again, just to show that it could be something really simple and something that you could. It's free to make these boards in this app, and you could share them around as well in the class. So trick or treat game. I've got some jokes here, some phrases for the interaction side of things as well. What do you call a cat with a crown on her head? So I've got the joke, and then I've got the punchline. A princess. A oh, princess, and then you can say. What do you think? What do you think of that one? Do you think it's treat? A treat or trick? A trick. And then you could have another joke, so you could have a few jokes ready. What did the cat say when she found something hard to do? This is impossible. Oh dear, I think that's trick. Trick for that one. How do cats tell the time? They look at their clock. Oh. Treat. So obviously you could be practicing your comic timing, making sure you give the joke, you wait, and then one person's given up or had a few guesses, then you give the punchline. So again, really good practice for interaction, communication skills. Okay, and also I was just saying there, um, you could also be doing some of those simpler ones, the trick or treat game, um, and also the smooth talker game when you when you come up with nice things to say about people, you could be doing those on a simple communication aid, such as a step-by-step -step or um, a GoTalk even. And just to show you what I'm meaning there, just before we, we finish up, um, if you go to the Symbols for All website and Equipment and Software, and it'll tell you a bit about um, that kind of early communication device, single message devices, sequential message devices, like a step-by-step -step where you could record the, the, a knock knock joke, for example, knock knock, and then wait for who's there, and then the first part of the joke. So you could be recording sequentially for that trick or treat game, for example. Um, so this has got some information here on where to, to get that kind of equipment. And also, you could record, just like I did with Sounding Board, you could record a really simple, low tech, medium tech um, communication board on Board Maker or Matrix Maker for um, a voice output communication aid like a GoTalk, so something a bit more simple, non-dynamic screen version. So the, the book's really there to give you the ideas to get you started um, and hopefully just to, to spark off some, some ideas of your own as well. Um, but that's hopefully given you a little bit of an idea of how you might use some of the popular communication aids and apps to, to get started. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Joanna. That was really interesting. I was I was thinking as you were going through it that uh, if the book's ten years old, uh, presumably when the book was was written, uh, there would just be really communication dedicated devices rather than iPads. <laughs> Not sure iPad had even been invented at the time, so it's that, that's time. right. Absolutely, yes. Um, so if you have any questions for Joanna, please pop them into the chat pane at the bottom, and uh, Joanna was ready to to answer anything you have. Thank you. And we've put the links in for Symbols for All and for the, the book. Is is there a cost to the book, Joanna? Is it free download or does it cost? Well, yeah, if you actually want a hard copy of the book that you buy from our shop, it's £7.49. But yeah. if you go to the download section and you, if you want to download the, either the whole PDF or just the individual activities, then that's free. You can just download the PDFs free. So if you want the hard copy and have uh, you know, in um, the whole book in a paper copy, then it's 749. Yeah, okay. So if there's no questions for Joanna, we'll just uh, close the session. Thanks again to everyone. Uh, Emma's asking, is there is there any more free apps? Um, well, there probably are. Would one of the wheels, the app wheels, be useful for Emma? Do you mean communication apps, Emma? Um, if you if you do, if you go to um, the download section of our website, 
and you go to the app wheels, there are a few different app wheels which will give you an idea of what apps are available um, and they usually have a, a key, like maybe an asterisk that says on the app wheel of which ones are free. I'll just pop that download link into the box. Okay. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks to Joanna for such a great session. Um, lots You're of nice welcome. Yeah, and just say that if anybody has um, like to get in touch and let me know if there's any other activities that they found particularly useful with their AC users, that would be great because I think that the book's probably due for an update, and it'd be it'd be nice to to add some new activities. So any feedback or um, any suggestions, it'd be really nice to hear from you. Okay, thanks. thanks very much. She's just saying that she's tried Book Creator in the past, so of course that's a really great app as well. Mm, it is. That would be nice for the, the photos, the show and tell photos. Okay, everyone, uh, thank you very much. I'll close the session now. Okay, thanks, Joanna. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Mm -hmm.